Hear ye, hear ye. So, Good afternoon. Hello. We got a new game to show off today. Or a new campaign, rather, of an old game. Yeah, I guess I dare say it will be quite the wonderful time today. Let's see. So it's been a touch over a month since we got this final campaign release for Shovel Knight. It's and been one week since you looked at me. Ooh. And there's been a ton of development already in this, in the speed run. I'm excited for the things that we're going to show off today. So on the top we have Red Pan and Spleen. They're right now they're using the the currently fat known fastest route. There's still a bit more experimenting to do with some of the other things that are possible. And there's a lot of possibilities that can still happen. A lot of more opt a lot more optimal things that are yet to be found probably. But the great thing on this particular campaign is so rather than these huge long levels and a boss at the end of each stage, um, this time around Yacht Club decided to give us a bunch of smaller stages and a bunch of little a bunch more options on what we can do. So there's a ton of possibilities that, that we can see as this run develops. So we'll certainly uh, uh, go into more detail about what exactly <laughs> is possible in any percent but yeah this this game has a much more super mario world slash donkey kong country style of level layout uh power-ups are littered um on every map um and right now turncoat is certainly the best option uh but it's also a notoriously technical category um i think that people who have any interest in learning this game would be just as fine familiarizing themselves with the game um, with other weapons if they so felt, uh, at least until they wanted to push top times. And yeah. uh, speaking of other things, uh, on the bottom two screens, you'll see David and Explad. They're actually going to be doing low percent. They're not going to be doing any percent. So they'll be on essentially an entirely different uh, level of race. Sorry it's not on the layout, but uh, yeah, David and Explode are the uh, premier runners for the low percent King Knight, and they actually have quite a lot more struggles to deal with because they won't have any of the weapons. Yeah. One thing that you'll definitely see is a lot of the levels can get highly technical. We um, are able... It's a lot about uh, movement in this game, of just like navigating each level because of how important that is. Yes, like a lot of these strats that we're going to see are, if you'd get one tiny thing off, it's a lot harder to recover from mistakes in, in this particular campaign with the enemy placements. Yeah, so starting with uh, just how you control this character, it's we got the charge move, and if you charge again while, like hit the button while charging still, you go into a roll. And the later you do that roll, the further you'll go. And you obviously don't want to do it too late, because then you just won't get a, a roll. So there is a bit of timing involved with that. So yeah, King Knight has a bash that can go into a roll. Uh, he has a jump. Anytime he hits a wall, he'll start a spin move. It also gives some heights, so it acts sort of like a double jump. Anytime he collides with an enemy, um, that'll happen as well. If an enemy has... Uh, no, if the enemy only has one HP, um, we'll just call it one HP, one hit worth of uh, health, then whenever you roll, you'll actually go straight through them. So in a lot of cases, you're going to see the runners are attempting to uh, roll through anything so that they don't go into the uh, the spin and bounce animation. And you're seeing right now, Explode's actually uh, really struggling to get past the <laughs> yeah. Bubble Dragon. Reminder that uh, because David and Explode are playing low percent, they're not allowed to collect any of the items in the game. So uh, not just um, heirlooms or armors, but they're also not allowed to touch the merit medals. The and... merit medals uh, normally being used to unlock their sub weapons. And we should also note that they're doing low percent item. Um, the game, as far as percentages, so even though we've already kind of mentioned that. Ooh, I'm there's sorry, a lot uh, of David just got a really Steve. difficult trick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was actually super hype. Uh, Plain sorry, I just. Uh, strat. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and say it again. Uh, this is one of the most technical characters in the game. So, although you may not notice it all the time, um, there are lots of really, really difficult tricks to nail. Um, so I might just interrupt every now and then whenever they do something that's particularly noteworthy. But yes, uh, please talk about uh, low percent as an item only category. Yeah, so so with, along with the options as far as how the different stages that we can do, there's a lot of different path pathing throughout the, throughout the game to get to the area's boss. 
Um, so, so the levels that you actually go through, they actually give the game counts that as different percentage points. So, there are some levels that are actually auto scrollers that would result in a lower map completion percentage, but one. We've opted to do items only, so we're going to see a mostly similar route between the low percent and the any percent. Or it'll be after, there'll be the stage after this where we'll actually see the the separation, but then they'll just reconverge back at the boss. Yeah, um, it was uh, <laughs> if we were going by um, by card percent as well, they would actually be going to the first this uh, this game for those who don't know. King of Cards uh, is not just a platforming game, but it also includes an entire really fun card game. Um, and you start out with some cards in the card game. You can actually lose those on purpose uh, if you really wanted to go uh, <laughs> for the lowest possible total percentage. You could literally go to the card house and just forfeit um, on purpose a couple times. Oh, man. Yeah, there are certain collectible cards that you that if you lose them, it lowers your percentage of cards. David doing uh, really well. He's actually already uh, at Spectre Knight. Um, Spleen actually not too far behind him, despite having to get a couple medals. Uh, actually, Spleen got there first. Very nice, very nice. Uh, Spleen, yeah. again, being the record holder. Um, the Spectre Knight fight is almost entirely uncontrollable. Uh, there is a way to lock him down, but because Spectre can kind of do whatever he wants, uh, we're slightly at his mercy here, so we'll probably end up seeing different patterns for each of the runners. David's I don't know. on his left, Spleen and Breadpan got him on his right. And Spleen actually took kind of a long time having to take him down. Breadpan and David finishing at the same time, and Exploud dealing with four more hits. Ooh, yeah. pretty nice at the end there. Got a couple uh, consistent hits in a row. I yeah. don't know if we mentioned a little bit with the spin move as well, that um, when you charge into, uh, when you bash into something, you will do go, jump up and do like a little spin, and you can't bash out of that unless you pogo off something again. And for the low percent runners, we're gonna see that a lot on on the second and third. Well, any any boss after this, we're gonna see that a lot. They're gonna try to hit each boss as low as possible, and then try so they can get a bounce as soon as possible to dash immediately again. And yeah, I hope you. That. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the card game because that was it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that is the one time that we see the card houses, and then we just immediately leave. Also, you'll see a lot of the times every time we go to that ship, which is kind of our main hub uh, for King Knight, the we're gonna way. go back to title screen because it's just it's actually faster to go to the title screen instead of. It's uh, several seconds faster to quit to the title screen and reselect your file uh, for yeah. this character. And although it was uh, a little weird at first, that's just um, what we decided. Any percent is literally going to be any percent. Uh, we don't care about so it. So we saw the first divergence between any percent and low percent. Ex Spleen and Breadpan went left at the checkpoint screen. The low percent runners go right. Yeah, going for the secret exit here. I mean, they could take the the secret exit as well, but they wouldn't be able to go through. <laughs> yeah, um, and the when they get to the it... secret ex stage, they actually have to pay with merit medals uh, to be able to go through the level. So Spleen now has the turn code, which cost him four merit medals. In this stage, you can't bash at all. So in order to move around quickly, they're actually using the turn code, which has a all roll right. feature in it. Let's see if Spleen gets his cycle. And he... it's a six. It's six cost, not four. Ooh. That's that's a really tight window to actually get that platform cycle at the end of that screen. And you can see how powerful the turn code is. Every time it absorbs an attack, it will level up. If it levels up three times, it'll unleash uh, three flames that deal a heart and a half damage total. Uh, on top of one, the secret exit is faster for that level. Um, but two, instead of having to do the stage that David and Exploder are in, uh, they do the turn code level, which is about half as long. So. Turncoat has a lot of time saved literally in just the way, um, in, in just the stages being done. Uh, not to mention the time save that Turncoat will offer, but it's it's definitely a huge chunk of the time save comes to the stages you do. Yeah, and it is, there is kind of almost like a secret tech with uh, Turncoat. It can be, it's been noted, it can be done with other heirlooms, but we just do it with Turncoat because it's, it's like the first one that you're really able to do with, with easily, I guess. Um... Not entirely sure of everything, but it's it it def it allows you to continue forward with your rolling momentum. 
I was uh, I was wondering there if we were gonna see uh, the really nasty tech from uh, from Spleen. We found. Uh, yep, he's trying it. <laughs> nice. So there's a frame perfect um, heirloom use that you can do on dirt blocks that cancels the spin. Uh, if you can nail that, cool. But it's uh, not something I expect to see happen. Nah. Not to mention, uh, every time he does that, it's going. It's going to use some of his Vigor, which you can see right below, um, it, it says Vigor. That's how many times he can use the turn code. Six Vigor to cast him? Yeah, it's six Vigor to cast that one. Um, we also see our any percent runners destroying these two checkpoints because right after this fight, we need 6,500 gold. Yeah, they're going to be picking up a new set of armor, which only becomes accessible to purchase after you beat World 1 Ooh. here, which is after this boss that Spleen is currently on. Splane doing very well dealing with King Pridemore. Uh, Pridemore has, pff, I don't know, like three different patterns with three different patterns afterwards in terms of like whether it is whether he decides to jump or not, how long it takes. The very good stuff on Splane's Yeah, that's side. amazing. And then low percent runners, they can grab this little decree is what it's called. And that's just going to help out with, with a little bit extra damage. And it doesn't actually count towards the percentage. Yeah, good job on Red Pan's side as well. Oh yeah, so the premise of this game, so King of Cards. So that little card get house that we skipped, um, the premise on how we got this airship in our bard in the middle is, hey, we need you to defeat all the Joustus Kings. Because apparently in the rules, if you can beat all three of the Joustus Judges, you can become the King of Cards. Except the rules doesn't tell us that we have to beat them at their card game, so we just beat them up instead. Yeah, King Knight thinks he's uh, a lot smarter than everyone, and in a lot of ways he is. Uh, he gets away with it, at least. Anyway, uh, so Spleen in the lead I, right now. I think now, it's more actually everyone's listening more to, trusting. Uh, I don't trust him. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of really awesome music, by the way, in this campaign. Nice job using the turncoat. By the way, the Battery Brigandine, ooh, nice. Uh, that's Nothing. a Carter. That yeah. little uh, moon, moon, moonward flip that he did there. Yeah, so we got the Battery Brigadine now, which allows us to dash up and down as well as left and right. And also allows you to do it again in midair, um, so if you charge it up. So that in that combined with the turncoat cancel thing that we're doing, the Carter jumps, the time's called, um, it, it allows you to just essentially almost like a double jump. Yep, and on top of that little extra... Ooh. Wow, I'm surprised David managed to do Okay, that was a little scary, because David wanted to do the secret exit here, and he removed all the foliage by mistake. So the fact that he managed to still breach the secret exit, very good. Uh, there's only one checkpoint for most of these stages. Uh, in some cases, there are two, but for the most part, there's only one. So any deaths are really, really punishing. Yeah. And you can see Exploud dealing with that screen where Spleen did that jump. It just saves so much time being able to have that extra height from the battery combined with Turncoat. <clears throat> so now Spleen heading for another secret exit here in Long Cross Lagoon. Exploud actually falling while trying to take the secret exit. Unfortunately happens, like it's like a lot of the a lot of these screens are just pretty tight even casually. <laughs> So Splane right now, not too much further ahead. Red Pan certainly uh, right behind him. David very close behind him. Yep. This yep. is actually a prequel story-wise. I think it goes concurrently as Spectre of Tor Torment, if I'm... Like it's, uh, it's basically at the same time, slightly before Spectre's campaign begins. So this is also the... First time in the Shuffle Knights series that we are we're not required to actually fight any of the original bosses that we that we saw in the the other DLC as well. Yeah, a lot of the knights end up being like little uh, features that un, uh, that walk around the map, so that they will appear depending on which uh, depending on which stages you beat, and they will move around. Mm. There right, are certain bosses. Oh, I'm I'm much oh yes, yeah, 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 let's see it. Let's skip. Uh, is he? He does a safer yes! version, but it's still <laughs> very good. There is a, one where you could do the double jump, like the Carter jump, even further, and it's just like not even having to wait for that cork. Really, it, it's Red it can get crazy. Yeah, that's a good two or three second save. 
Probably more. I haven't actually timed it. Uh, shout out to Breadpan. Bless his soul. But he's notorious for uh, talking during the races. And I would rather he not die. Let's see what Breadpan does here. He's going oh, to he's, oh, he's, he's going for the, the safer okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we, since we sk he skipped the checkpoint in this stage, and it really sucks he died at the very, very end of it. Yeah, that would have been an immediate uh, lead change if that had happened. Also, yeah. they're in Red Splitter Run right right now, which is um, another stage where there's going to be a secret exit. Uh, this is actually a slightly more insane stage to go through. Ooh, he made it. Okay, there's uh, a yeah. yeah. Those um, those fire traps are on a global cycle. So from the moment he entered the level, he kind of has to keep going at a specific pace. Oof. And they're yes. very important, especially here, the secret exit, you see that they're, they're all over the place now. Yeah, and the other thing that's really important about taking this secret exit is... The normal exit is an auto-scroller. Uh, you might notice that uh, Splain right now only has... Ooh, that was close. Only has two hearts. In this game, unlike the other knights, um, every time King Knight takes damage, he always takes one heart. Unless it's... Um, from a pot lid. Pot lids, for some reason, deal two hearts of damage. Uh, getting crushed later on uh, by a specific block will also deal two hearts of damage. But for the most part, everything deals one heart, so you basically have less health than you would in any other campaign. Yeah, there's no half health symbols in this game. At least not for your character. There are for the bosses still. I, I will also mention that King can be a slightly safer low percent than the other. Other campaigns, because you probably noticed during the King Pride More fight that you saw these hot these hearts pop out of it as you did a lot of damage. So you do get that extra free healing as you go through these fights. Yeah, it's the developers a, it's a were yes aware. And, it's a yes and no to that because they you're attacking by bashing, so you're basically under the assumption that you're always going to be running into an enemy. They they they're expecting you to take damage more. But if you play well, then you do basically get free healing. Okay, and so we got Spleen in the middle of the final Trouble World stage. Um, Breadpan David just started it, and now Spleen on the auto scroller. This is, I always find this to be a funny way to deal with it. Instead of triggering all these Trouples, you just end up waiting as <laughs> to trigger them as late so, as possible. So, uh, let's talk about this real quick, because <laughs> previously, uh, during the, during the, um, I did testing for this game, and uh, you used to sit at the front of the auto scroller, uh, and you would never get hit by them. Now you just sit at the back of it. Okay. <laughs> Man, it's a shame no one has Scepter, because they would, you know, be skipping uh, large sections of these. Scepter is uh, the route that I've been doing. It's unfortunately <laughs> not the fastest, because uh, Turncoat just saves so much time. From the, uh, you'll see the like on. Um, you'll see the how that how much Turncoat can wreck this boss right here. Oh yeah, Turncoat yeah. makes up for it in a lot of ways. This is gonna be one cycle. It's crazy. Oh, he missed a three flame. He didn't oh. get to one cycle. Well, it's still not mm. bad. Still not no, bad. No, he still got. Yeah. Okay, okay. So good. So good. Got Five. to the Got to the charging part. <laughs> still a very quick fight. And then and then uh, on the full king. It's like if you fire the shots at the right way, you can actually double hit. The triple king with the same shot if he's if he's going along with it it's crazy yeah. i want to point out as brad pan gets the boss fight just now that we actually skip charging the boat towards the next screen because the boat actually will just spawn right underneath us as we screen transition so we don't actually need to push the boat over it just comes with us all right let's see how brad pan does this fight nice that's two one more three good very good. Perfect fight from Bitpan. Yeah, David so, having to do the uh, traditional fight, so you can see how much longer it takes. Yeah, yeah lo look at them as he's jumping into the water first, so he can get that bounce early and dash in the middle of that. And the low percent fight is a lot harder, too, just because of you have no place to land. If you are in that water, that is immediate death. So you have you all you have is the boat. Well, you can it, you don't die the moment you touch the water. You can certainly get your way back out of it, but you don't have a way of flying or anything. So unless if you're attacking something, you're not going to be getting back. Yeah, the death plane is still below the screen. It's not at the water level, but nice some more Carter jumps. By the way, uh, they're called Carter jumps because uh, 
Carter Freak um, was uh, the one who figured this neat little interaction out. Uh, it's certainly uh -oh. not super intense. Oh no, explode. Took a dip. Yeah, he dashed a little bit too late, so he couldn't meet the Triple King at the edge of the screen. Yeah. It's, uh... And there's the... I love it when you get as low as possible, because you can see the boat actually rising out of the water there. <laughs> it's actually particularly... Uh, this is one of the reasons why we said it's so punishing to play as King Knight is because if you try and extend your roll with a, or if you try and extend your bash with a roll, you no longer get the spin. So you have to make sure that you're close enough to make contact with your bash. And so now with the Tinker Knight stages, we've got these twisting uh, platforms that go up and down, and we also got these this lightning that if you step on it, all the lightning platforms trigger. On the uh, yeah, Spleen is uh, going through Shock Assembly right. Nice job going through all those gears with the... Uh, yeah, another Carter jump there. We can just use it to cut corners so well. Like that. To, to note about Carter jumps, the um, getting the, the flip out of it is fine, but you get more height out of it, the better you are at it. So, like, yeah. you can certainly do fine with, like, a minimum, but... Getting a super high Carter jump is very difficult. Yeah, basically... Yeah, it, it, just relates, it just relates back to the roll mechanic of the later you do it, the more distance you'll get. David, also in Shock Assembly, uh, explode not too far behind. He's in the previous stage, Portusion. Ooh, nice! Spleen and Cyclone Sierra. We're actually going to see a uh, really cool trick, hopefully, at the very end of the level. Yeah. So... so Honestly, we should spend the whole level explaining this, so let's do that. So in Shovel Knight, whenever you enter a room, everything in the stage, or everything in that room loads. Um, be it the uh, the objects that you have to deal with, the enemies that you have to deal with, um, but only certain things are interactable. However, for uh, <laughs> luckily for them, the Cyclones are interactable the whole time, as is the Gold Ring. So in a second, they're going to be in an auto-scroller. Uh, Spleen has to basically do this blind. Um, Heavily relying on audio cues, but uh, you're gonna see absolutely nothing for a while, and then the stage is gonna end because he's actually gonna hit the goal ring. Yes, like, yeah, and yeah. it's the very last part that's most is the hardest because we actually do have one cycle that's actually very nice. Side to there side. it is. It's very good. So hopefully you get to see it again with Red Pan as well, so that you get the sound along with it, so you can hear what's going on because you will hear the sound effects of going into the cyclone and jumping Red out. Pan, what are you and doing? You'll also hear, I'm gonna bully him also later. Hear the end me? Roll ring. And you actually don't need to jump if you miss your initial dash. You actually don't need that uh, cyclone either. You can still jump up and get that ladder with the dash. By the way, that is done in every category. There is nothing that any percent gets. Why did you not grab the checkpoint? What's wrong it, with you? The skip is still done in low percent, so you'll see it for all four of the players. Depends on how late they'll do it, of course. Some people are more confident than others. Red pen. There it is. Yeah, getting the wow, end there. Great. Good stuff. Very good. Probably the same timing as, as Spleen. So, we don't really get to see Jawas be as big of a pain in it, at least in this route. Um, there's supposed to be a giant one in this screen, but the way we move by jumping underneath that first platform causes them to not come out for us. David's also working on the auto scroller skip now. Nice job. There we go. Yeah, got gets it. Okay. So now Spleen has to deal with uh, the second Spectre Knight fight, and uh, Spectre Knight this time around behaves very similarly to the first time. However, when Spectre is on four full hearts or less, he'll start to transform into the same fight that you saw for Shovel and Plague Knight. If you deal enough damage to kill him before he finishes transforming, you actually skip the second phase. So we're going to see him right now starting that up. One, two, three. Oh, Good job. Yes. Yeah, so if you, as soon as he gets to the top of the screen, he will heal back up to full to start the second phase. But if you damage him before he gets to the top of the screen, keep damaging him, you can actually get him down to zero before he has a chance to heal. And especially with King Knight, doing the, the traditional Shovel Knight f form, it's, it's a lot tougher with um, King Knight with 
how he bounces around and how he just it's really hard to do the nice little onslaught of damage at the same time uh king knight is not particularly good at fighting let's say that <laughs> it's true uh, that's why i he's, he's, he's okay at moving around kind of fast um but he that's, is not great at that's why he needs subjects as most kings are, they're not the greatest fighters. They let the other, they let their uh, servants do it hand, for please. them. Okay, let's see if Red Pan's able to get it. He got Looks it. Looks good, nice. David, not too far behind. I'm really hoping that they can get the low percent quick kill. It's so difficult. It's like, yeah. uh, anyone so who's ever see... gotten it is like, I'm never gonna beat that split. <laughs> yeah. So instead of uh, tr trying to get him to, into one of the corners, they're gonna try to trap him underneath one of these platformer platforms when he starts to rise, so that they can kind of get a loop uh, of a lot of hits in. David, unfortunately, Spectre was not low enough, so he didn't get enough time really to get enough hits in for it. Spleen now dealing with Birder. Is uh, is he able to get it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice! He got the uh, the good opening. Ooh, good stuff. He got the entire good opening. Uh, let's see if he can see, finish it now. Yeah, you can see with David dealing with the second phase, how much slower oh. it is to deal with the second phase. Spectre just flies all over the screen, and it's King Knight just isn't fast enough to match that. Not at all. That was a, that was a clean bird if I had from Spleen. I want to see if Red Pan can get the um, the same intro um, because King Birder is actually not random. He just has a lot going on when you, when you deal. With him. Yeah, no, King Red Birder. Pan! No, Red oh, Pan! Oh, oh, oh. oh no! <laughs> I see <laughs> this. He nearly <laughs> saved it too. Like he was. He definitely had the presence of mind of what he just did to himself, but it's just was way too late. So, despite the fact that David had to deal with the entire uh, second half of uh, of Spectre Knight, um, because Red Pan died like that, David's actually not too far behind. Yeah, there's a good race going on between Red Pan and David right now. Spleen so already entering the last world. Yep, and this is by far the scariest dark room segments out of all the Sho Shovel Knight campaigns. Yeah. We do have ways to deal with uh, skipping cycles with some of these crushers, but they are very risky, and I don't think we really see Spleen go for any of them, really. He'll go for a couple. Uh, yeah. He might do it because he's very far ahead and it's a showcase. Yep, I'm not, sure if he, I'm not sure if he's paying attention to the rest of the race. So, uh, it was kind of touched upon earlier, but uh, one of the things that you're trying to do with King Knight's base tool set is you're trying to, you know, bounce off an enemy, bash into them, and then immediately bounce off them again and again and again. So it kind of gives you this one, two, three type of hit. Oh, nice finish. Ooh, nice finish. Okay, Exploud was not able to get the cycle skip. Uh, phase skip, rather. Let's see if uh, Spleen does any cycle skips here on Crusher screen. Doesn't look like he's going for any of them. Just going to wait it out. Oh. So another thing we should should note about Birder King is what's it? The trigger is like every three hits that he starts to heal reheal. It's at certain thresholds. Um, I believe it's at uh, four hearts, half health, and uh, sorry, four hearts taken, half health, and four hearts left. And there's a couple of in betweens. One hit left for David. Good job. It's yeah. The more time you spend in that smallest arena, it, the scarier it gets because you just are at so much risk of getting crushed that it's just, it's painful to watch sometimes. Uh, Explode, please get some help. Oh yeah, it's just, it looks like Explode is on like a second attempt, second or third attempt of Spectre Knight here. Working on the second phase now. Oh. Okay, so Spleen heading through uh, one of the coolest stages, Lava Well. I want to see how he does on this last half here. Yeah, and an element of of platforms that we actually haven't seen before. These axolotls, which are really cool. I, I like them. Just, just, Axel I like that the big says. And then this ice skating section. Long ice skating section where we got this demon flying dragon thing flying towards us. If you slow down, he'll catch up and it'll make your life much harder on the screen. Yeah. So, greatly done by Spleen. Oh, we got a David fan in chat. I approve. Dad approved. 
Okay, Xfile's trying to get Spectra Knight again. It's like this is not this is not a joke fight at all, especially at low percent. Yes, Warp Wrap Keep. I actually really like the name of this stage, which is why it's probably the only stage name that I remember. <laughs> They're all alliterations. <clears throat> well, another little property of Turncoat is after you release Turncoat, you do have. A tiny bit of invisibility. So just enough so you can actually jump off a spike right after. Oh, explode! Please get your health back! <laughs> yes, this is the only stage uh, that uh, Spin is on. It's the only stage which uses this mechanic of having uh, warp mechanics with that little green line to the top and bottom, or left and right on some screens as well. Alright, X Cloud makes it past Spectre. Um, another All Scroll section at the end of this stage before. Oh, Jesus, David, please! Uh. Um, this screen, this auto scroller that Spleen is on does have the possibility of having a similar skip to the Cyclone Sierra, but it's much harder considering it's moving platforms, so nothing's really been attempted with it as of yet. We're attempting the task, and that's about it. Okay, because there's also quite a few enemies all on the way to you that can still hurt you off screen. Yeah, working with only sound when there are moving platforms, it, it's not easy. You know, I see Brent Pan holding charge a lot, and it reminds me of uh, his roots. <laughs> but please don't die! Oh my god, Brent Pan, please! Oh man. Made it through. Alright, we're almost at the end of the Solar Scroller on Splain side. Yeah, yeah towards done. the end, there will be a little bit of blind stuff once they get to the ladders, because you can get to the goal ring without seeing, because there's just solid ground underneath you. At yeah, once, yeah, once oh. we get to the ladder, there's nothing that blocks us. That was, uh, I, I'm always forgetful that uh, David plays um, on the Japanese version of the game. Um, that doesn't actually have, like, any time saves or anything, but it does change the color of certain enemies, so his red duck knights are green. And there he sees Spleen finishing it a little bit early, as we said. Alright, we've got X Cloud on his Burger King fight. See how he gets that going. There we go. Alright, so Spleen getting ready to do the final block section ever. Yes, the uh, Tower of Hero Room uh, 4.0. Yep, there's a tiny bit of time safe if, if you want to do damage boost right before the last block spot. Not too, it, not too terribly much. There's a reason why Spleen has so much health right now. Enchantress fight is actually very difficult. It's actually the pretty much the same fight as what Spectre Knight deals with. So if you're familiar with that character, you'll see the same thing. But with King Knight's it's different move, moveset, fight. it's much harder. It's it's very technical. Um, oh, and then I I still think it's a tiny bit safer than Triumvirate fights, but yes, there of course the final boss after Enchantress. There's a second boss for all four characters, and for King Knight, it's the Grand Triumvirate. These three kings that we beat uh, get taken over by the Enchantress. We'll see that in a bit. Until then, let's just see how Selene deals with Enchantress. Turncoat gets this really tall hitbox when you get the full charge. Oh, come on, Spleen! So oh, well, that's fine. Yep. Another good reason that we like using Turncoat. I think it's the only heirloom that we have that can actually damage below the floor. Rat Bomb Badir can. Yeah, any oh. sort of projectile that you can throw at her would, if there's holes in the ground. Yeah, if there's holes well, in the ground. That, that's basically why Jason... Oh, God, Red Pen! Oh! <laughs> That rat really was out for blood for a second. Wow. <laughs> okay, that, so... that would have been the end for you. <laughs> yes, oh my okay, god, because Spleen... you, you don't grab the checkpoint in that stage. No. So Spleen now going into the Grand Triumvirate fight, which, as I said, yes, three kings combining into this one ultimate king fight. The damage, at least for this first part, is only on the sides of the head, those little gem, uh, those big gems that you see there. Uh, we'll try to be going into a loop here with the battery bringer Dean to continuously hit him on the sides and not have to land. Yep, yeah, we don't have enough projectiles to actually make Turncoat of much use. I mean, 
I think last I've tested, you could actually damage him with that, but there's no way to actually set it up. <laughs> yeah, the, the spike balls that come from the ceiling, you could Very use good those. fight from Splain on Triumvirate 1. Let's see if he can get Brain Freeze on Triumvirate 2. Yeah, so with this one, the hitbox is now on top of the head, and so we'll be able oh, to use no, he's not gonna be able to get Ogoing mechanic to work through. Oh, there we and, go. And yeah, oh, the battery ring at the okay, end of, okay. does allow oh, us to yeah. do two hits with each spin, so it, it does go a little That's bit. time for Spleen. 32-30. Very good. That's, wow. That's, I don't think I <laughs> That's <it>. ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think I had a death. I think that was a death. That is crazy. That is, um... It's 20... better than anyone else's time. Literally better than anyone that's... else's time but his own. That's 12 seconds off world record. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait, no. It's 32-08. I'm doing math weird, but... Yeah, 3208 is the world record. So to be that close to his world record time, and I believe he said before the race, he's a week and a, a week and a half of rust on him right now. He hasn't touched the game in a week and a half since the. Uh, oh no! This. So getting that good out. of a time is crazy. Yeah. Okay, so Brett still has the advantage because he can use Turncoat against Enchantress. Um, but if he if he does that again, David could easily take over. Take it. Brigandine only does so much on the uh, on the second phase. That pen, please. Yeah. Yeah. The the charges that she does diagonally are random into what direction she's going in. So we just kind of hope that we get a good direction that we can bash into her. With There we go. Yeah, Put nice setup at the with end phase there. One there. David having to deal with it much differently because you get again, we don't have that taller uh, turncoat to deal with her when she's underneath us. So it's a lot of just waiting <laughs> for, for the openings. Red pan in chat, turncoat is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, there was a. It's like he didn't get as much damage on the early stuff as he wanted to because just. It's so, like, it looks like the flames are actually going through Enchantress, but the hitbox was just far enough away that we actually had some failed This attempts. is still, yeah, this is still really close between Breadpan and David. Of course, Breadpan has that advantage right now of that turn, uh, of the turncoat and the Battery Brigadine. Battery oh. Brigadine is more so a factor. Turncoat's not going to do much of anything for him. Uh... Ooh, okay, Breadpan has been knocked out of the loop that we can get for the first phase, so... He can yeah, he's not able to continuously get the loop yet. I'm in trouble here with the fight. He's on very yeah. low health. And... Yeah. And oh yeah, the... one hit for Breadpan. It also means, unless he grabs that heart. Please, Breadpan, oh, no! no! Oh, oh. <laughs> Breadpan gonna take the death. David, David now at half, uh, dealing with him at half health on this first phase. David, David might be able to completely overpass and take this. Oh, but David needs to get more health if he wants to get brain freeze. Uh, one that's that should be good. He just needs to hit. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. This one. Oh, okay. Good platforms to get back to a hand. A hand will uh get you for get you if you go off screen, but sometimes it just puts on, you David, in an undesirable position. David, please. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Brightpan now going into the second phase. Okay, David playing This could be safe. close with the two hits that uh, Brightpan is capable to do with each pogo. And time! There we go. David gets this one. Okay, so David is going to be able to take second place there. Yep. Uh, Brightpan, Brightpan does manage to get brain freeze. There it is. Yeah. Yep. yep. Really David. close times. Oh yeah. Eight to thirty six ten. Yep. The big thing on that brain freeze thing, why you didn't see this last second phase actually fly around after, is the trigger that actually causes that to actually work work is landing on the hands after the head moves. So if you just skip landing on the hands, he'll just stay still. Then you get then you just auto win. Okay. And we got Exploud now on the Warp Wrap Keep uh, Auto Scroller. Okay. 
do we want to spoil the ending of King Knight for people? And now that we're seeing it on the three spoil screen? the ending. I mean, if you played Shovel Knight, then you know what happens. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Yeah, Spleen is literally sitting on, like, the moment right before Shovel Knight enters that room. Yeah, the very familiar scene, uh, pretty much at the end of every campaign, where all the all, all of your friends are hanging by a chain, and you have to choose to save them or, or make them fall. On King Knight's campaign, you don't have a choice. You just kill them. Or not kill them, just make... you abandon them. Yeah. And then Expired is almost, almost to the boss battle himself. And still going to be a pretty respectful time, especially for low percent. Yeah, low percent is a much harder uh, run in a lot of ways. And it's slower by default, uh, just because even if... Even if they didn't use any items, including the turncoat, if they like literally just like went through the turncoat stage but never used it, they would save like forty seconds on the run. Yeah, but unfortunately that violates the rules, so we can't do that. Not allowed. I also just realized this is only like David's second time able to get a sub thirty six in low percent. So All right, we've got Explode entering final stage. I believe the record for low percent is like 35.30, just for reference for people. Yep, then I was watching the run last night as well, and I think his sub his sum of best is actually in the 33s. This is Matt Peters. Oh, oh, I didn't realize, and David, yeah, that was a no-death run for David. That's his first ever. Oh, nice. Okay, Exploud coming up on Enchantress now. Getting some really good luck with those charges. Yeah, reacting to it very well. Ooh, nice Getting... triple hit on the way up. Yeah, got Enchantress down to really good low job. health very quick. That was a very good in low percent fight for Enchantress. Very. Before she finishes going down to the bottom. <laughs> All right, we'll see how X5 handles triumph for it. And we're trying to get the runners in right now. And we do have David joining us. GG. I am David. Yeah. Nice uh nice second place. <laughs> I I don't believe Well, okay, I'm sorry, it's Breadpan, I believe it, but I don't believe it. Yeah. Look, bless Breadpan and everything, but like uh he never knows to not YOLO. I, Explod, I do understand. please get the hell! Oh Explod dying oh. Uh, like two hits out out of the first phase. Oh no. Uh, but David, that was a very good run. You know, first Deathless, on, like your second sub 35. Uh, 30, 36, sub 36, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how I pulled that off, really. Boo, King Knight sucks. <laughs> Hi, Red Man. Hey, Red Man. Just some unfortunate stuff that happened. No big deal. Yeah, I, I almost had an actual decent race for once in my life, but, uh, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, w what category do you have world record for? Not this. 
No, you have it for plague any percent. And how did that go against the yeah. Well, let's not go digging up those old ones. <laughs> yeah, but, but Plague Knight is actually a good character, so... Okay, explode on phase two now. Explode! No! Oh! <laughs> uh, I'm out of a platform! <laughs> oh that my pause. god. That boss is no good. Oh, uh, at least I didn't suffer so, them, though. It was pretty good to show uh, four runners here at the same time, because uh, it goes to show literally how brutal uh, this campaign can be. Although it's really, really fast. Uh, it's so easy to die yeah. in a lot of them. There's not a lot of room for error. You you have very little control once you commit to your dash. And so it just becomes so much more of having the confidence and knowing what you're going into. Yeah. If it can, usually if you try to improvise, you die, and then everything goes wrong. So Explode! Yeah. Please get the health! <laughs> oh my god, one health, two hits left, such a similar situation. Yeah, improvising is oh scary, which... <laughs> oh my god! He's fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 no, wait, double kill no, 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 is not no. fine. If he dies, double right is not right. fine, Wait, well. what? I think he was fine, it's just because he was dying, the paw, it was like, everything was in oh, slow no, motion, so the hand wasn't moving fast enough to pick no, him double up. K double KO is not fine on Triumvir. You can fall, but you can't die on Triumvir. Uh, I think it only matters if you, because like the hand's not going to pick you up if you don't, just don't have any HP. But if you're dead because you ran out of HP, then it's just like, oh, you died. Get good. <laughs> I mean, it still displayed him with one heart at the end there, though. That's why I was like, I thought it might work. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. I saw that too. Nope, I found that out casually that it doesn't work. It was yeah, a game. fight is bad. And it, in low percent, it just seems like a lot of the time the best tactic, unfortunately, is to just wait until he's he's uh, King Triumvirate's in a better position for you to hit him. Yeah. Okay. So he, he does he does have enough health to go for it. He just has to. That's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do green freeze now. It's okay. That's time for him. GG. There we go. Very neat. Very neat. 10 out of 10. Incredible. <laughs> but yeah, King Knight is just brutal. Like, I mean, I thought Shovel Knight was pretty bad about punishing mistakes, but King Knight is worse. Yeah. There's like a million things you can do in any moment and have you die. Or accidentally press dash one too many times, and instead of being able to turn around, you just roll off the edge. Yeah, yeah if happening. you if you press bash in midair and then you press the other direction, you actually stop your bash wherever you may be. <laughs> so if you're not precise with your inputs, you could accidentally cut your bash off, not get a spin, go directly to jail. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that at the very beginning of the game, going after a medal, then I'm pressing right too early and I fall to my death after getting it. It's like, whoops. Uh, JC, can you get spin in here? I'm trying to. I'm not sure if he's noticed the uh, invite yet. I, I give him a pink. Okay, sorry. But yeah, uh, Redpan, uh, so how do you feel about your run? I saw that you... Yeah, I, almost, I almost feel good, because like every death I had was like, well that shouldn't have happened at all. And I also got the, like I got most of the stuff I actually wanted to get. Like the murder fight wasn't good, but I didn't die, and I also got the Spectre phase skip, and I didn't die lava well for the 15 millionth time. <laughs> Uh, so you actually got a little bit of the um, the good stuff. I love calling it the good stuff. Was when you get birder in, a, in the ceiling, you got you got a lot of that in the top left. And spleen got about eight hits in the top right. Oh, there we go. We're here, sure. Yeah, I just pinged him. I just DM'd him the link. I, <laughs> and, yeah. Hello. Hey, we haven't yeah, mentioned now. yet that he. Uh, or, well, I don't know if the commentary did. But... Spleen's run is 22 seconds off his record, so mm -hmm. no chance for me anyway. Yeah, two seconds for every day of rust, I guess, right? Right. That's exactly right, yeah. Neato. <laughs> and uh, before Troy says anything, um, if I had not gotten the extra two hits, the extra two health, I still would not have gotten a record. So my safety yeah. health did not 
for, that, that did not stop, stop me. Stop. Only my own badness stopped me. I where do you remember. feel? Where do you feel like you could have saved that time in this run? Uh, well, the first thing that happened was um, when I used Turncoat on King Pridemore, his hitbox is so small that my Turncoat actually missed him. His wet head's head went in between the uh, the three light things. Oh, that's oh, perfect. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. that literally happened to me on Nightmare Reese because the Barrier Lantern works the same way. The flames went around the hitbox. <laughs> oh no. But uh, the other place was um, the first uh, turncoat jump in Heavyweight Heights. I just flubbed it and fell back down, but I didn't die. So it's okay. Oh, speaking of uh, terrifying uh, harder jumps, Redpan was trying to save his own life in uh, in Birder's Roost. He fell down against the um, flying group of five. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about that? Yeah. With a lot of stuff like that, it's just like, oh, you better do the charge bash here, otherwise nothing's going to work. Mm. I feel like we should um, answer at least a question of, because this is a lot for just showing the, uh, the the speedrun itself off, so if anyone wants to like give any advice to people who may be looking into potentially doing this game... Yeah, so... Uh, I Advice guess play, real play. Quick, there's <laughs> Brett, Brett, please. Um, the Spade Brigade, uh, the speedrunning Discord uh, community, we, we have um, a pa uh, strategies channels uh, for every night uh, with message, uh, pin messages, videos, uh, Google Docs. Uh, we don't have an official like video series or guides or anything, but uh, we're, we're always there. We're willing to help. Uh, Queen, do you have some specific thoughts on that? Yeah, if you want to get into it, like just do runs, you know? My first run was 58 minutes. Just, just do it. That's, do it and do it again like and get better. And definitely don't get discouraged by dying in this run. Yeah, you gotta really it, do that not to die, otherwise you're gonna keep dying. Not to mention, um, you don't have to do any percent. You can literally do any category of this game, like whatever you want. The leaderboard, the main yeah, categories are 80%, low no, percent, 100% new game plus. Living but anywhere but the we US. encourage we encourage absolutely everything. Like some people came into the server and asked if they if they could do rev roll speed runs, which is a cheat code Yacht Club posted on their Twitter the other day uh, that makes uh, King Knight have a spin dash. You want to do that? Go for it. Like power to you. Uh, we told them no and called nine one one. Wow. It's like, and then you don't even have to do these these routes that we that you saw that day. So. I so, Mumu, he likes to do the scepter route, and what that actually does is it lets you dash on water, basically in chain that over and over. So, some of the more dangerous segments can be kind of safe. You just have slightly harder bar fights, no big deal. Um, it's a, uh, a trade-off. It's a trade-off. It's kind of like skele skeletal sentry and, and bounding soul for spec. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot of options. You can just do however you want to do this. Like, you want to have fun with the sword, then. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with that. Yo, when is light plate lightweight lightweight plate saber runs? When are those happening? Well, lightweight plate and uh, so lightweight with coat with fire sword. Uh, I think that's quote unquote only about a minute slower than just turn coat on its own. So it's still pretty good. You still get second place with it. <laughs> the the absolute, absolute state of King of Cards. You, speed you can also get second place with low percent. The savagery right now. <laughs> Ouch, well, not for long. Once I figure out what's going on in my life. Yeah, get good, my guy. Alright, so thank you everybody for racing today. Spleen, Bread Pan, and David. Um, Xplod has opted not to come in for the interview, which is perfectly fine. Um, coming up in the next five minutes on this channel, we do have a Mega Man 9 showcase coming up to promote the tournament that's coming up in three weeks. So... Shoutouts to the Mega Boys! Very well. Hope you guys have fun with that. Yep, hope you guys oh. enjoy Best Night Runs. So, mm -hmm. now we get to watch them. We're gonna leave now. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. The, b the background is the fairy realm. See if you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> the actual true ending. Take care. Alright, see you guys. Ciao.